in the last video, we learned about the gradient theorem. The uh, gradient theorem is closely related to what physicists called a conservative vector field. When we wrote u equal to del phi, that phi in physics would be related to the potential energy. The u would be related to the field that the potential energy is arising from. Here, we're going to treat this as a mathematical object. A conservative vector field will be a vector field that satisfies one of four conditions. All of them are equivalent. The first condition is that the vector field can be written as the gradient of some scalar field. Okay, we saw that was useful for the gradient theorem. Uh, the second condition is that the curl of the vector field is equal to zero, okay? Because we've already proved the theorem that the curl of a gradient is equal to zero. So if u can be written as the gradient of a uh, potential phi, then that means that del cross u has to be zero. Okay. The third condition, which is equivalent to these first two, is that the integral of u dot dr along a curve C, doesn't matter how you draw the curve C as long as you have the same starting point and the same ending point. So we say that this is path independent. Okay. Uh, another way of saying path independence is simply that the integral around a closed curve of u dot dr is going to be zero, okay? Four statements of u being a conservative vector field. Um, it's equal to the gradient of some function. The curl of that uh, vector field is zero. The line integral of that vector field uh, over some curve is independent of the path of the curve as long as it has the same starting point and ending point. And the integral over a closed curve then has to be zero. Okay, let's work a problem uh, having to do with uh, conservative vector fields. Okay. So the problem we want to solve is to let u, the vector field u of x, y equals x squared 1 plus y cubed i plus y squared 1 plus x cubed j. That's our vector field. I want to show that u is a conservative vector field, so it satisfies these four conditions. Any one of these uh, conditions is fine. And we want to determine the phi such that u equals del phi. So in general, the easiest way to, to um, determine whether u is a conservative vector field is to take the curl of u and see if it's equal to zero. That's just a straightforward calculation. So we have the um, curl of u. Is this three by three determinant? So it's a i uh, j, k, so uh, d, d, x, d, d, y, d, d, z. Of the x component is x squared 1 plus y cubed. The y component is y squared 1 plus x cubed and the z component is zero. So this determinant. So the i, uh, i component then will be d dy of zero minus d dz of something that doesn't depend on z, so that's zero. The j component will be d zero dx is zero. Uh, my, or the negative of this, minus d dz of this, which depends on x and y, is also zero. 
So the only thing remaining is the k component here. So we have um, d dx of this one is uh, the derivative of, of y squared is 0. So we end up with a 3x squared y squared minus um, d dy of this first one. So the d dy of x squared is 0, so d dy of x squared y cubed is a 3x squared y squared. And 3x squared y squared minus 3x squared y squared then is 0. Okay? So the curl of this vector field then through a straightforward computation uh, is 0. That means it satisfies the condition 2 here. All of these conditions are equivalent so that u then is a conservative vector field. In part b then, I want to determine the uh, potential function phi such that u equals del phi. So u equals del phi then is uh, two equations, right? So it means the x component of u equals the x component of del phi, and the y component of u equals the y component of del phi. So the equations for phi will be the x component of del phi then is uh, d phi dx, and that's supposed to be equal to the x component of u, so that's x squared times 1 plus y cubed. The y component of <coughs> del phi then is d phi dy, and that's supposed to be equal to the y component of u, so that's y squared 1 plus x cubed. Okay? So to determine this uh, potential function phi, we need to solve what is essentially two differential equations. But these are uh, partial differential equations, if you want to be uh, precise. But they're actually rather simple to solve, and uh, in these cases, they usually are. Um, the way to solve this is to simply integrate with respect to x holding y fixed. So we have, we take this first equation, so we have phi is going to be the integral with respect to x of x squared 1 plus y cubed dx, holding y fixed, right? So this becomes integral of x squared is 1 third x cubed times 1 plus y cubed, right? You can see that the partial derivative of this with respect to x gives us uh, x squared times 1 plus y cubed. But if we differentiate this with respect to x to get x squared times 1 plus y cubed, we have the freedom of another function here, which is only a function of y. So the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, the, the function of y will be 0 if we differentiate with respect to x, and we end up with x squared times 1 plus y cubed. Okay, so we still have an unknown function y here. So we use the first equation. Now we can use the second equation. So we can write d phi dy then. We can differentiate this with respect to y. So one-third x cubed will be zero because it doesn't depend on y. So we have one-third x cubed y cubed, the derivative with respect to y will give us x cubed y squared uh, plus the derivative of f with respect to y, which is f prime of y. And that's supposed to be equal to d phi dy, which is y squared plus uh, x cubed y squared. Okay? x cubed y squared then will cancel x cubed y squared. 
Um, so that gives us f prime of y equals y squared, right? Um, the derivative of this function with respect to y is y squared. We can integrate then y squared, so that means f of y is going to be one-third y cubed plus a constant. Here we have a real constant uh, because the derivative of f with respect to y, the constant will go to zero. Okay, putting it all together, we have uh, phi is equal to one-third x cubed times one plus y cubed plus one-third y cubed plus a constant. Um, might as well write that neatly. We get one-third and then we have x cubed plus x cubed y cubed plus y cubed plus a free constant. Okay, we've computed this uh, potential function phi so that now u, the u that we were given, is equal to the gradient of this phi. Uh, this is a, a useful calculation because now if we do a path integral of u dot dr, all we need to know is the value of phi at the endpoints. So this is the, uh, the gradient theorem equivalent to the fundamental theorem in single variable calculus. So let me review. We say a vector field is a conservative vector field if it's the gradient of some function. If it's the gradient of the function, then the curl of that vector field is zero. The second condition is the one we can use to determine if a given u is a conservative vector field. The consequences of being a conservative vector field is that the integral of u dot dr over some curve is path independent, and that's equivalent to the integral of u dot dr over a closed curve is zero. In this calculation, I show you that uh, to prove that u is a conservative vector field, just show that its curl is zero, and to determine the potential such that u equals del phi, you have to set up the uh, two equations and then do some uh, single variable integration. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.